Welcome back everyone. I want to talk to you today about LoJack Flux Pack. So what is it? Well, very simply, Comfy Org came out with an all new rebuild of the masking, LoRa masking and LoRa model weights scheduling um, code. All of that is explained in an article which I'm going to be linking in the description of this video. If you don't want to miss my next video, hit that subscribe button because YouTube ain't going to tell you. And also I've done a write-up on the project page on the GitHub, which is also the description for the um, the main page on my LoJack Flux, Flux Pack. It was a, The example given was for 1.5. I've decided to use the Checkpoint FP8 version of Flux Schnell for my version. But you can use it with Flux Dev, you can use it with the, not, with the full fat version, not, not the FP8. So it's all up for grabs. But essentially what it is, I've given two examples, Lojack Flux Mask, which gives you, I'll show you in a minute the workflow, but it gives you the ability to use the new dynamic market masking system. And then I've also given a full example of how to use my uh, geometric pattern videos for mask generation. So I call these motion masks. They were originally introduced for looped motion, which is a another model you can find up on Civit. And essentially, there's also a scheduling version. So it's temporal control and mask control for LoRa hooks. So you can build your own custom LoRa hooks, and then you can use those to do various different effects in the generation. Essentially making it much, much cleaner so that you don't have bleed over when you're lo loading LoRas or multiple LoRas. And uh, there's going to be more workflows added as we find new implementations and ways to take advantage of this new update. The combo breaker is just a combination of masking and scheduling. And to be honest, it's a bit it's a bit abstract at the moment. It doesn't really work as well as I thought it would it would work, but I've included it in the pack anyway. And then I've also given a special um, interpolation workflow, special frame interpolation tool. And uh, like I said, if you see the special interpolation tool, what it does is it takes advantage of the fact that you can use Qbatch to do uh, motion masking, which ba basically is the animated masks. Uh, those masks can be in .mov format and you can throw them into any directory. And again, what we've got here is we've got an image directory based uh, animation tool essentially. So once you've made all of your images in the main workflows, you can then load up that directory and then you can have them turned into this sort of animation. All right. It's a bit like a more stable deforum, I guess, without all of the crazy controls. But it takes a pre-baked sequence of images, which you can make in the other tools. So that's the idea. As you can see, this is what it looked like before it had the interpolation smooth things out. And uh, there's a couple of other features like the batch offset overlay with image blend. Um, and we're using GIM interpolation. So this is the interpolation workflow that you'll find in the pack. Okay, so let's take a look at the first workflow. The easiest way to use this, I uh, did explain this on the live stream the other night, but it's worth just going through it one more time. So essentially, it's really simple to use. So the first thing you're going to actually do is turn this off. Okay because it's using my prompt lists. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that these are prompts that you actually want. So because we've disabled everything, we can just change the seed and have it come up with a different prompt from whichever prompt list that you might want to use. The top side is going to be the Laura loaded masked um, line. Okay. And then the bottom is no Laura unmasked. Okay. So if we take a look at this, I've got DJ, DJZ S3 captions here. So if I just change the seed here, now you could put it on increments and you could just go, man, a man with a sword standing in front of a sky. Uh, let's keep going. A person with long red hair. A uh, couple of men standing next to each other on top of a pile of rocks. We'll leave it on that one for now. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. I'll put it onto fixed and just make sure it stays there. So let's go back one because it looks like there we go. So a couple of men standing each other on a pile of rocks. Okay, and then the next thing is I want to confirm which motion mask I'm using. Now, of course, you can always just load in your own masks. So they would go here and here. All right. So uh, what we're going to be doing is one, the inverted mask is obviously going to be the bottom line and then the 
normal mask is going to be the top line. And in that way, you're essentially in painting uh, whatever the mask is. OK, so you can obviously make your own mask. You could put a split one in a gradient. There's a whole bunch of different masking you can do. But what I'm recommending is that you use one of these. So if I just click Q, it'll show us we're using this one right now. So how about we just go back and use number three, which is like this pixel grid. I think number two might even be blown up. There we go. So this is like a blown up version of the other one. Now, if I was going to put this on increment, you can see that it's actually animating. OK, and this is what I'm talking about with the motion masking there. It's an animated mask, right? So this is actually a video which is being um, we're going through those set those frames. So we'll start off at zero again. Go back to that one. Leave it at one. Go to fixed. See, that is what's actually going to be the mask for the next image. OK, so essentially what you can do is pick the frame here and then pick the video here. Now, I've given away my lonely drivers pack a long, long time ago. It contains 56 high quality motion masks of various geometric patterns. You can see here is the one that was uh, developed for uh, the sort of uh, concentric rings. It's like a tunnel. OK. And I think you can see that there. All right. Um, and essentially what it is, is you unzip this into your input folder as the folder name. It's downloadable from Hugging Face, so you can grab all of them. Like I said, there's 56 in all. Some of them loop, some of them don't, so you have to see how far you go. You can obviously step up here, so I could have it skip a frame by putting it to that, and then having it on increment, and then queuing up as many as I want. Obviously, eventually, you're going to hit the end of the video, but, you know, that's one, that's just a small thing. They all have different lengths, so it's not easy to automate, but all you do is you just make sure that you're not oh, going off the edge of the uh, thing by adding too many. Anyway, we've got the name of the video here if you want to find out exactly how long or how many frames you've got to play with. And remember, you can always add your own, so you don't have to use mine. This is just an example of how you can use motion masking for this uh, particular workflow. So anyway, we're going to put this back to fixed. And so this is the this is the uh, this is the mask we're going to use. So at this point now, we're happy with that. We're happy with the prompts. And now we can turn this on and take a look at the actual workflow. So first of all, we've got the Flux Schnell FP8 here. It's also loaded here so that both the top and the bottom have the uh, have the same model being used. But this one's coming in as a hook model. All right. Um, and again, there's no Laura being loaded down bottom. OK, it's completely up to you how you use this. Uh, the top one is going to be using the abstract chaos Laura, which is trained on flux. And that's why I'm using the abstract chaos prompt for the top run. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run it through here. There's all kinds of various different things that you can change and play around with. But for this is just the basic example to hopefully teach the concept of what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this image and we'll come back and take a look at the result in a second. Meanwhile, while it's cooking up, we're going to take a look at the scheduling version. So again, this one doesn't have my motion masking. Uh, it's using aspect size at one to one currently, but it is still set up for the abstract chaos prompts and the abstract chaos Laura. It's going to be using Schnell Flux FP8, again, combined checkpoint. And as you can see, we've got the hook keyframes interpolation node. All of these are newly rewritten, rewritten uh, implementations for this. Now, I'm just using 0 to 1 on linear with a start percentage of 0 and an end percentage of 0 0.5. Obviously, you can play around with all of this stuff and see what it does and use it to your heart's content. But what we're going to be doing is essentially playing around with the conditioning. OK, now you could put the mask in and that's what the combination version did. But I wasn't really very happy with how you put those two together. I think maybe it might be that I just needed to actually generate more frames. But obviously the most the, the obvious thing people were thinking was this is going to make little animated slideshows. And it does do that. This is one of the re uh, how I made this. So. As you can see, this is a very simple animation using the concentric ring tunnel, using a mountain landscape and the and then the uh, abstract chaos Laura. So obviously on the black rings, it's actually 
drawing that model and on the white rings it's drawing the other model so as a result you ended up getting uh both clearly defined so you can see that it's not bleeding into itself but it is blending well as at the same time so the problem that it used to be was that if you had a very strong laura it would just take over the entire image and so what this can do is actually keep things very very separate and so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be looking at ways of using this to create more advanced image generations so this isn't going to be part of the uh photo flux pack because that tended to be built on align your steps style flux workflows whereas this model is using the uh native flux implementation which is the traditional k sampler style so that means it doesn't have the same type of workflows that you would see in the photo flux pack all right so that's something important to bear in mind as well but that does mean that we can take advantage of this new stuff um without sort of worrying about um having to like recode everything ourselves because that's what they've already done for us so again the uh, full documentation for the changes that have been made they're all very well explained in the comfy.org article. I have done a brief rundown of this in the readme on the Git flux, GitHub version. But if you, and there, like I said, the images in here are a little bit just illustrating the basics that have been put into this tool. Obviously, here's some examples of a few of the 56 motion lauras that, motion lauras, motion masks, which I've included in the uh, Lonely Drivers pack. And finally, the same, it's the same write up here, but you, like I said, it didn't embed the images as well. I think it might, I might just need to like reformat that a little bit. But the point is, um, the, the links will be in the description of this video for the Lojack Flux pack itself. Obviously, I'll put a link in for the GitHub, and then I'll put a link in for this article, which is out of Comfy Org. So first of all, thank you very much to Code Sync, who actually did the, the refactor on these. There's a lot that can be done, and I'm hoping that a lot of new workflows are going to spin out of this pack. So watch out for updates, and I should have the result for this one any second now. Okay, looks like we got our result, and as you can see, the abstract chaos stuff is limited to the bottom left corner of the screen. But... The, and that, if you remember the motion mask, see here is where the brightest white area is. So this is where the best masking was for that. So obviously if we'd flip this around, it's going to be mostly the other way around. And you're just going to have the two guys down the bottom there. But the point I'm trying to make is you can clearly separate this Laura and its styling. And then whatever the prompt was for the other half, okay? So it's like a clear separation of the two prompts, but still blended together well. So obviously, <clears throat> I could have probably picked a different mask there, but I just wanted to show you that that's what this does. It gives you the ability to blend without bleeding. Okay, so that's, I think, going to be the main advantage of what this is doing. There's going to be a lot of ways we can apply this. So I'm going to look forward to what other people are going to do in the community. But for now, you can watch out for some updates on this. So pretty much that is the new pack. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.